week away half term hope you all enjoyed that an extra day back at work i guess for you guys in the main um i had a little refresh last wednesday thursday and friday time off so i'm just going to recap what we did on numerical methods last time a little bit um, and then we're going to move on and look at two other um, numerical methods to give you a gradually better and better results from from the um what is an, an estimation technique okay. so we we've had a look at the trapezoidal rule um last time and i'll pinch the slides to show what we're looking at we're looking at um if we had a function we're looking at joining the top of two ordinates with a straight line so we end up with a trapezium and the summary of all of that is that the trapezoidal rule gives an estimation of the integration between A and B, the definite integral, by multiplying the width of the interval by half of the first and last ordinates plus the sum of the remaining ordinates. These lines here being the ordinates Y1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So we end up with an ordinate width by taking B minus A over the number of ordinates that we have. We then went in to look at a particular function and we integrated um, between the between X is equal to 1, X is equal to 3, the function 2 of a root X. We're using that function all the way through to show how the differences in first of all the number of ordinates for each method but also between each method we integrated it using mathematical methods initially and we got a result of 2.928 to three decimal places so that's the basis for comparison with the um, numerical methods. We then went in and done um, numerical methods with um, formal ordinates for, for, for um, effectively uh, five ordinates from four divisions. So four intervals. Yeah. So you end up with five ordinates there. We create a table and work out what the value of y is when x is 1, 1 1.5, 2 and so on. Go through and apply the, um, the, the trapezoidal rule and we get 2.944 to three decimal places comparing with um, 2.928. In your notes... I believe towards the end, I've started to create a table for comparison of all the values that we're going to do. <clears throat> so by integration, we got 2.928, which is the exact figure between those um, limits. And using four intervals on a trapezoidal rule, 2.994. Yeah. So, so we can... Fill that table in as we go today, hopefully. We're then tasked with using the tra trapezoidal rule with eight intervals um, to come up with uh, a closer result, hopefully, a closer estimation. The idea was that that was done over the holiday period. Was it hell? Who said that? Okay. So, we're going to have a go at that now. We need to create a table of results. X and the function um, 2 over root X. What's our interval width going to be here? going to be a quarter. So we're going to start at um, the 
what value? We would need to complete that table. All right, let's make a start. All we got for one, we got one from before anyway, but what is it? When X is one. Y is... Point two five. Someone's cheated, are they? Look, uh, look ahead. <laughs> Go on. Carry on. Two point two five. Two point five. Point seven five and three, which we already had anyway. First block. On one point what? Okay. So that's your data. We've got to apply the uh, mid-ordinate rule, sorry, not the mid-ordinate rule, the trapezoidal rule to that, which is approximately equal to a half of the width of the interval, which is quarter times half the first and last ordinates. So that's half of two plus One point five four seven. Plus these remaining ordinates.
which is quite long-winded. So do that, please, and get me an estimate. So we created a table using our um, eight intervals, applied the rule. Be careful, that first bit out there side there is not a half, not always a half, it's the width of the interval, so you need to be careful with that. Half the first and last ordinates there, some of the rest of them, we come up with an estimate of 2.932, which we can now put in our table at the end. 2.932. Yes, curse. In what? Mistake in which table? This one? Two point nine four four. Yeah, okay. That might be what because what I've done there, we can change it. What I've done is taken the results that were in the book. You might have done slightly different rounding with some of your ordinates. So we'll go with, I, I didn't take it from there, I would think. So we'll, we'll change that to, to our result. Yeah? 2.944. That might, that might be a typo, Curtis, actually, that far right. 2.944, yeah? So we got closer by adding, doing eight intervals instead of doing four, yeah? So, moving on then. A second method, yeah? second method is the mid-ordinate rule. Each interval of width d is assumed to be replaced by a rectangle of height equal to the ordinate at the midpoint of the interval. You can see that from the diagram there. Here's our intervals and then we create a rectangle at height at the midpoint and you can see we've got little bits missing from the integral, integral there, but the extra little bits in there that kind of replace it as we go along. Okay, so we end up with a mid-ordinate rule where an estimation of the integral between A and B is the width of interval times the sum of the mid-ordinates. We just add all the mid-ordinates together and multiply those by the width of the interval and we get an estimation for the definite integral between A and B. So, I think, I can't remember if I've left the tables in for you in your notes, but I've, I've pinched the one that we had from before, try and speed things up a bit. Okay, so that's the, exactly the same. We're using the same function here. We're going to use the mid ordinate rule now with four intervals to evaluate that function, in te definite integral, to three decimal places. Uh, I know what I've done, because you've got to take the, um, that's the mid-ordinates now, isn't it? Yeah, because we've got to do the mid-ordinates, haven't we? Let's take that off. Worries. So we want 1.5, that be the, um, if we go on from, our, our D is one, isn't it? Or half. 
So we've got to go 1.25. Are they what we want? Yeah. And the results of those are? So we're looking at mid ordinates now. We have to find out where, where, what the mid ordinates are. Create a table. This, if you had to do this um, too often, perhaps a spreadsheet might be handy here because you could easily um, do your calculations then. Microsoft Excel or something. Okay. But we need, so we've got a, an, an approximation between three and one. Have I gone wrong? If you've got four intervals, there'll be four mid order next one. Yeah, eight's the next one, eh? Do you, we'll let you do that one. All right. So, the mid order net rule says that we need to take um, half the interval, or, or the interval, sorry times the sum of the mid ordinates 1.7889 plus 1.5119 plus 1.3333 plus 1.2060 close the bracket we end up with approximation Two point nine two to three decimal places. Yep. Got that, Curtis? It's looking puzzled. Yep. I've added the zero because we're the, the question asks for three decimal places, so you'd have to include that trial and zero, yeah? Showing to the to the correct accuracy that was asked for. All right. So 2.920 again. We can add that to the table at the end. We've gone slightly under now. So that one, 0.008 away, but slightly under. Not quite as close as eight intervals with the trapezoidal rule. Close, but it's not quite as close. So, eight interval mid ordinate rule. Give me an answer, please. Dan told me 2.926. So, again, add up all the mid intervals, multiply the result by the interval width, gives us an estimation. 2.926 with 8 intervals. Oh, 
Stood in quarry Ed? Oh, you got that, did you? 2.92 watt, was it? Six. The three decimal places is our standard. So we're two thousandths of a square unit out now, using eight intervals. Not very close, is it? Right, last technique we're going to look at, okay, Simpson's rule. Simpson, with Simpson's rule, the approximation is made by joining the tops of three successive ordinates with a parabola, i.e. by using a quadratic approximation of the form A plus Bx plus Cx. If a definite integral is denoted by the integral between a and b of y dx, as is represented by the area under the graph of y is equal to f of x between those limits as shown, Simpson's rule states that an approximation is a third of the width of interval times the fir first and last ordinate added together plus four times the sum of the even ordinates, plus two times the remaining odd ordinates. Okay? Now, in the, your bird engineer maths manuals, there is a full derivation of Simpson's rule. I don't propose to go through that, because we want to use it. We don't want to know how it works. That's my opinion. Okay? So... Someone else has done all that proven work. I, I don't see us wasting time going through that. That's Simpson's rule. Let's use it. Okay? Rather like the quadratic equation. Why worry about deriving it? Let's use it. Deriving it's probably for A-level maths, is it not, Sophie? Yeah. All right? We don't want to be doing that, do we? So, Simpson... One, one proviso here is you should note that Simpson's rule can only be applied when you choose an even number of intervals and therefore you get an odd number of ordinates. Okay? So you have to have an even number of intervals of Simpson rule which will give you an odd number of ordinates. So we're going to apply Simpson's rule using... First of all, four intervals, and then on the next page, eight intervals to that same function, and see how close we get now. So we've got a third times width, interval width is a half here. That's D, the interval width. This is the first and last ordinates. Four times the even odds, even ordinates. Two times the remaining odd. And that approximates two, gentlemen. Anyone got me a, an answer? 2.929 square units. Two point nine two nine point double oh one away from our exact integration method to put to the same number of decimal places. Okay. Last of all, and that's the table you need. I've pinched that from the um, first thing that we did today. Okay. 
do Simpsons Reel with eight intervals. See how close we get then. So just to sum up for the video, that using Simpsons Reel with eight ordinates, we've got a third of our interval width there. This is the first and last ordinates. Four times the um, even ordinates. Two times the remaining odd. And for this particular function, we get an estimate for three decimal places that is exactly the same as we got using mathematical integration methods to three decimal places. That don't mean that we'd always be that close to Simpson's rule, but you know it's, it is quite obviously the most accurate estimation method. So there's a couple of questions towards the end of your notes. Two problems for you to have a go at now using Simpson's rule. Okay, so there's one on an alternating current. Intervals two milliseconds, so they're giving you the interval one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's an odd number of data points, which is what you need for Simpson's rule. Find the charge. The charge is the definite integral between 0 and 12 for that function. Okay. And then the last one on the page, again you're given some data. Vehicle starting from rest, and its velocity is measured every second for 8 seconds, with the values as shown. You're going to calculate what the distance travelled is. Because if we have a velocity versus time graph, the area underneath the velocity versus time graph is the distance travelled. Right? So have a go at those two.